So I know a lot of you need to run Windows for whatever reason that may be, but you watched the video I made on how to set up a media server on an old laptop using Linux, and you would like to be able to SSH into it, control it, and do some file transfers from Windows. And that's what this video is. What I'm gonna do is show you how to do that. So to do this on the Linux machine, you are gonna need something called OpenSSH, and you can check to see if you have that just by typing SSH into the terminal or onto the system, whatever it's running. And if it gives you some sort of feedback, you have the application, you're good to go. Chances are you already have it. I know on Ubuntu server through the installation process, there's an option to install it with the installer. If you don't have it, it's a simple command. You just run that to get it uh, installed. I'll have a link in the description for some more information on actually setting up the Linux device to be able to do this, but chances are it's already good to go. Now, Windows is not good to go. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and first do this just through the general command prompt. And to do this, what we're gonna want to do is go ahead and search for features. Here, we'll bring up your apps and features. And when you're in here, you're gonna want to go over to optional features. This will load up, you'll see a couple different things here. You see right here, I already have the open SSH client installed. If you don't have that, you just go add feature and then go down and find the open SSH client. Um, so once you have that, all you need to do is go to your terminal or your uh, command prompt. So CMD command prompt. And if I type SSH, you see it gives me some feedback. Now, if you type SSH into your Linux machine, this is the same feedback you should get. And then SSHing into a server is simple as typing SSH, the username or the name of your machine. For me, it's Hopkins at, and then the local IP address of the machine. You can find your local IP address by going onto the machine you're trying to connect to, typing IP space A, and you can find your local IP address there. You could also connect to domain names and stuff through this, but for now we're just gonna focus on our local home network. So I'm gonna type in my IP address, which is 168.0.8, hit enter, and now it should ask to connect to it. There we go, I had a little timeout. I had to actually make sure that it was awake and active. So that's something you're gonna to wanna to make sure you do. You'll get a thing asking if the fingerprint is correct. Chances are if you're on your local network and you're connecting, you are good to go. So we're gonna hit yes. It's gonna ask you for your password, which is the password on the machine if you do sudo or you log in, anything like that. So go ahead and type in that password. It may not show that anything's displaying, but that's just how it hides the password. Hit enter. And now we are connected to that machine. You can see here it says, welcome to Ubuntu 20.04.2 LTX GNU Linux. So now within this command prompt in Windows, I have full control over that media server. So if I do LS, we can see what's in there. If I go CD media LS, it's just like it would show up on the Linux terminal and you have complete control of that machine. So for example, if I do HTOP, you can see I'm running HTOP from that machine in this terminal. So that is one of the methods to do this through the um, Windows terminal. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a way to actually get in and transfer files. And the method that I would personally use is through FileZilla. I use FileZilla all the time. I've been using it forever for just general file transfer between actual web host servers. You go ahead and download the free version. It's gonna work perfectly fine. Save the file. Once you have it, go ahead and open up the installer, agree to their terms of service. We're gonna install this for anybody. Go with basically all the default options and settings. If you get this thing right here, I decline that. This is one of the reasons I don't like, uh, I don't use Windows is the crap like this, but decline and then we are good to go. It will install it, click next, and we are going to start FileZilla. All right, so here we have it. Now to connect to this, your host is gonna be very similar to what you typed in for the SSH. We are going to go host is sftp dot dot forward slash forward slash and then your username. So mine's Hopkins at that local IP that we typed in earlier. So 168.0.8. Now username is your username and then password Good. Password is your password. You do quick connect, and for now I'm going to save passwords. 
the server's host key is unknown, you have no guarantee that the server is the computer you think it is, but local network, we know what we're connecting to. We are going to always trust this host, okay. And now you can see that the files are displayed, just like you'd expect. This is my home folder. Being that this is a SFTP, it's going to show the hidden, well, it's not the typical Linux file explorer, so it's going to show all the hidden files. But just like this, you have access to all, all the files, just like you would if you were on that computer. And then you could do things such as, let's do a new uh, text document, just call this test.txt. And then you could do things like just drag and drop this. It will connect and send the file to the server. So that is how I would personally send files and retrieve files from my media server if I were to be forced at gunpoint to use Windows. So now that I have showed you how to SSH into the server using the uh, command prompt and how to access files with uh, FileZilla or just some third party application, uh, I'm going to kind of flip that now and we're going to show you how to SSH into the server with a application. One of the more popular ones, and this is by the way free and open source software, is Putty. So what we're going to do is simply download this application, we're going to get the installer right here, save the file, go ahead, open this up, and we'll minimize this for now, and here is our Putty installer uh, with any other Windows application, you just hit next as fast as you can. Don't <laughs> don't view the README file. And now we will open up Putty. So here it is right here. Um, you connect to it just like you would expect. So we need the host name or IP address, which is the, I should have just copied and pasted this. I'm typing it so much. Uh, the port default is 22 and you just hit open. Login as, so you're gonna go with your username on that server which for me it is Hopkins and then we're gonna go with my password and now you can see through putty we are logged in now a lot of people use this instead because it's easier to save some of this data and it's easier to have multiple connections and there's a lot more features of putty that we're not gonna get uh, really into but you can see just like on the terminal not the terminal I keep mixing the two just like on the Windows command prompt we have access to the full Linux terminal like you'd expect so htop everything shows up fine go ahead and quit out of this uh, you can ls to see everything that's going on um, Ooh, you guys got a little uh, sneak peek I was using the server to move a little text document around that I'm working on okay so that's basically how you SSH into this so like I said I do prefer more graphical user interfaces when it comes to moving files around for me it's just a lot easier but if you're used to working in a terminal or the command prompt, this might be perfectly fine for you. So this is really simple. You just do SFTP um, space and then it's at your username at the local IP address of your server. It's going to ask you for your password. And here you have SFTP. Now this looks a little bit different because we do have some additional options. We are able to do the basic commands such as seeing all of our documents. You can see some of the movies I have there on my server. So now what I'm gonna do is download one of these files. Uh, the one that's probably gonna be the easiest is Interstellar. So all I type is git and then the name of the file or if you know the directory, you don't have to do all the CD stuff. So there's spaces, so I'm going to have to go like this, interstellar, make sure I spelt that right, which I did, 2014.mp4, MP, go ahead and end that off, and then we want to set the actual directory to save to. Uh, for this, I'll go ahead and open my file manager and just copy and paste this real easy. There we go, copy this, and we want it to appear in this folder, or this, uh, yeah, this folder on my Windows machine. You hit enter, and it's going to say it's fetching this, and it's going there. So then if we go over here, you can see that Interstellar is right here, it's not done downloading yet but that is how you actually get files. So we now know we get files with the git command. So what we're gonna do is use the put command to put a uh, file from Windows or from whatever machine you're on to your Linux server. So we're gonna go put, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just transfer, let's say I want this OBS file right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in my directory that it is in, 
and then the name of the file. So get that, control C, control V, and this is a, what type of file is this? Uh, MKV, so dot MKV, dot MKV, and we want to put this, let's say, in our home directory, in the user, and we'll just put it there. And before we hit enter, I forgot to do these again. So let's go like that and that because I didn't realize that there's a space. Hit enter and then it is going to begin uploading this file and it has completed. So we can then go CD into our home directory. Oh, CD into our home directory and then LS CD into Hopkins LS again and then we can see that media file from here has been moved over to our media server. That's how you do it with the terminal or the command prompt. That's why I like FileZilla and basic SSHing through the command prompt is my preferred method to SSH. And that's really all you need to know with basic SSHing and file transferring from your Windows machine to your Linux server. I do hope this video has helped you out at least slightly Give a thumbs up if it did. Uh, if you have a Linux machine and you want to learn how to do this, you can just watch that video I did on um, the creating the media server out of an old laptop. It's easier in Linux. It's you just basically do the SSH command, but file transfers are way easier because with like Dolphin or Thundor, Thundar or whatever, you could just put the uh, FTP or SFTP thing in the address bar and connect that way and then have full graphical user file transfers through the default file manager on your Linux system. Thank you to my Patreon supporters, you guys mean the world to me. Uh, if you'd like to become one, there'll be a link in the description. If not, subscribing, commenting, and sharing this video with uh, your friends, Facebook groups, whatever you want. Um, yeah, thanks for that. Have a great day and goodbye.